Welcome to a brand new edition of Overdrive. I'm Shireen Ban. As you can see, we've got a lot of action lined up for you, both on two wheels and four wheels, off-road and on track. But let's start with Bajaj Auto. Now, this company has successfully created several new categories within the two-wheeler market. It seems to have done it again with the Pulsar 135 LS. So we sent out Shumi to check out how this bike stacks up against the best in the 150 and 125 cc category. this motorcycle. This is the Yamaha FZ16. It's been around for a while and it has now two variants, the FZS with the little fairing and the Phaser with the full fairing, slightly taller handlebars, the Touring model. Right from the design stage, Yamaha wanted a really fat tyre on the FZ. The Indian customer demands them very vocally indeed. The FZ, despite that, goes around corners very sweetly and the ride, though slightly stiff, is well damped. This effortless competence is what we've come to expect from all our 150cc motorcycles. What it's doing here in this test is representing the typical 150. You know, the air-cooled engine, the roughly 14 PS of power, this kind of weight and format. Yamaha's added a dash of style to the whole package which we're not used to and obviously we're thoroughly enjoying. Of course, the FZ is one of the more expensive 150cc bikes available in the market today. And at the expensive end of the 125cc market, we have the Honda Stunner. The bike with us, of course, is carbureted, but the fuel-injected version is exported from here to Europe, where it replaced the CG125, a venerable Honda. And I have to say, the fuel-injected version sold there does rather well for itself. On the whole, the Stunner is an excellent motorcycle. It's supposed to be a commuter, it looks good, it does its job, it's frugal, it's very good to ride, and of course it shares the powertrain with the Honda Shine, which I'm told is currently the biggest selling model, single model, in the whole of the 125cc segment. The 11bhp Stunner, again, is a typical 125. Between that and the FZ, they represent the two accepted segments of the Indian motorcycle market. It's a classification that's gained a fair bit of momentum and come to be accepted implicitly. But Bajaj has thrown a spanner in the works by saying you don't have to choose between this or that. You can have the best of both worlds. If all you do is get this. The Pulsar 135 takes the well-entrenched style of the Pulsar range a step forward. The usually dominant bulbous tank has been reshaped, the rear end is very skinny and the bikini fairing is tiny and sculpted. It looks good from every angle as long as you look past the dowdy full-length hugger over the rear wheel. But the 135's real star is its engine. The Pulsar 135's 134.66cc engine represents the first of the next generation of DTSI engines from Bajaj. Like all DTSI engines, there are two spark plugs, but above that, Bajaj has added four valves. Four valves allow the engine to breathe better. Think about a human being with four holes in their nose instead of two. They'd be able to take deeper breaths and the exhalations would be faster as well. And the result is the very same. At higher revs, the engine can pull in more fuel and it can release more exhaust gases, producing more power. Four valve engines typically produce more power right at the top of the rev range and that's not necessarily a good thing because when you're riding on the street, you rarely go to those heights as far as revs go. But the solution to that and what Bajaj have done is use an undersquare engine. Typically, the oversquare configuration uses a wider piston which travels a shorter distance which allows the revs to be picked up faster so you can get to the place where all the power is. But the undersquare engine, where the piston is smaller but it travels a longer distance, is the traditional way to make more torque. The idea is that this engine will produce very good torque from low down and then that will blend into very, very good top end power. Does it work out in the real world? It does. This is a really fast motorcycle. It makes 13.5 PS, which is just half a PS of the typical 150 in India. But at the same time, it feels really, really fast even at the lower ends of the rev range. 
but we have a problem. The engine in feel sounds more stressed out than the Pulsar engines we are used to and crucially it has vibration. By three and a half thousand, you can feel the first signs of it. And by five and a half, six thousand, it's a well-established part of what you're doing with the motorcycle. It goes really fast, but there is vibration. And there's not much you can do about this. High-stressed engines that make a lot of power do vibrate. Like most Bajaj motorcycles, the Pulsar 135 offers very good dynamic ability. Around corners, it is self-assured and the new diamond frame makes the bike fun to throw around sweepers or slice through traffic. In keeping with its sporty character, the usually supple ride quality of the Pulsar is tuned for a stiffer feel overall, which is great for cornering, but obviously not so absorbent. There is no doubt left in my mind that I am sitting on the best motorcycle in this test. We started out by trying to see if the Pulsar 135 LS could handle the 125cc competition represented by the Stunner and the 150cc competition represented by the FZ16. Starting with the Stunner, it returned a fuel economy of 64.7 km to the litre overall in our road test. The Pulsar 135 produces 64. The difference is so small that I'd say they both roughly have the same economy. And since fuel economy is a big driver in that segment, I'd say this has the measure of the 125cc commuter. Talk about the FZ, 5.2 seconds to 60 kmph. This takes 5.5. 0.3 seconds is a very small time slice, especially when you start thinking about the price. Now that is an expensive 125, but that is not the cheapest motorcycle on this test. This is. We did say that, that is an expensive 125, but still, this is 4,000 rupees cheaper than the Stunner, and it's a mind-boggling 14,000 rupees cheaper than the FZ as well. As I said, it's a very, very strong buying proposition. Now, there will be those among you who will not consider anything below a 150cc segment bike, and more power to you. There are very good 150s in India today, and you have a wide choice. But if you're thinking about a 125, maybe you shouldn't be stretching your budget all that much. You should be lowering your budget a little and buying this.